Electric motors, at their core, are rather simple devices. Hook the terminals up to the correct voltage, and there you have it, rotational torque on demand. However, installing motors in an industrial facility can be a little more complicated. Not only the sizing and installation of the motor, but managing the power supply to the motor needs to be effective, reliable, and most importantly, safe. Global Spec and Rockwall Automation have teamed up to break down some of the fundamental components in motor power management. As you continue your motor education, design, or selection, remember that globalspec.com is your go-to source for easy, powerful search of all your precision rotation needs. Visit one of these sites to learn more. We will be looking at unboxing this Allen Bradley Rockwell Automation Branch Motor Control and Protection Demo Kit. We open it up here, and there's a nice infographic showing all the components inside. So I've put together these components in a couple different packages. These are tested and made to work together, and that's supposed to help ease of design, ease of replacement for technicians, for engineers. Try to take some of the guesswork out of that. So first, we have our 140 MP motor protection circuit breaker, otherwise known as a thermal overload. Three phase capability. This one is four to 6.3 amp adjustability. These can be ordered up to 32 amps max overload. This is what I would consider a traditional type overload. Nothing too fancy about it, but it will protect the motor from overcurrents if it's starting to lose efficiency, if there's some sort of damage between this and the motor or down the line. This can pick it up when it pulls too much current and hopefully prevent too much damage or any damage to the system. So if we were to build this up, we would start with our line voltage coming in, then our voltage coming out of this overload would go into our motor contactor, essentially our industrial switch, electromagnetic switch that we use to turn on and off our motor. And in this case, Rockwell has these ECO connecting modules, which take more of the guesswork out of connecting various modules that are made to work together. This is the 140MP to the 100-C series. We can pop off these clips, internal clips. quickly and easily pop out the front face of the contactor. There's a spring in here. We take the coil out. This is a 24 volt coil in this case. But a coil could be replaced in this manner as well. Place it back down. We make sure our clips are back over the nubs there. And there we have it. Now the coil that brings the con that sucks the contactor in to turn on the motor is on the bottom. Then we can attach our connecting module like so. We would tighten these contacts, tighten these contacts. This is made so two different two different DIN rails spaced apart appropriately would hold either component. This setup would be used for protecting a standard three phase or single phase induction motor. The nameplate of the induction motor in many cases in my experience would be something like a spindle on a CNC machine or a motor driving a conveyor, things of that nature. You would size the overload, a thermal overload, based on the full load amperage rating on the motor nameplate. You would find something within that adjustability range, ideally, and then you can set your overload to the correct amperage rating to protect that motor. Same thing with the contactor as far as using the correct contactor rated for the amperage of the motor. These ECO blocks are nice because they're made to work and they're tested with the systems, so you can also find one of those that's rated to work, has the correct gauge for the max current draw in the system you're controlling. 
And then in this case, we also have the 140 MP aux contact, which quickly and easily can be placed on the 140 MP water protection circuit breaker. This could be used to verify state of this contactor. If it is tripped, it can be sent, an alert can be sent, an alarm can be sent to the HMI. So an operator or a technician can see that, oh, there's an issue with this motor. And we can use this E100 electronic overload, which has pass-through wiring, and this will monitor electronically, monitors your current traveling to your motor and can actually detect current variations that indicate an upcoming motor failure. It can also, if configured correctly, detect phase drops and other warning signs that your system is failing, that your motor is failing, and then it can send via the aux contacts that are built into to this overload. It can send that to your HMI and say, this system needs to be looked at, requires maintenance, requires repair before things get to the point where it causes damage. Similar to that, there's the 140 MT motor protection circuit breaker. Very similar to the MP, but it's a little more full featured. Can still use the same type of aux contacts, but this is also for in the cases when you're running multi-motor branch circuits grouped motor variations and you want to be able to use smaller conductor sizing, save money over the larger design of the machine. In general, it serves much of the same purpose as the 140 MT, but has more features for if you have many motors and a lot of conductors where you're going to try to save some money by lowering the uh, required amount of, of cabling and conductors needed. Next, we have the 100E contactor and the 100E safety contactor. So this is a safety contactor. The aux contacts for the safety contactor will not weld themselves closed in the event of a failure as aux contacts may do on a standard contactor in the event of a catastrophic failure. So they are inherently more safe. They are required to be used in certain industrial situations by certain regulatory uh, standards. And they could, me myself, would use these in situations where it's a risk to life or limb of an operator, something of that nature. So these go together, or can go together, and we can use some other parts of these kits to build a reversing contactor. And we can also make it a reversing interlocked contactor. So first I'll show how we can swap out the coil, in this case, it's quite easy. The coil comes off two terminals there, and then the coil gets popped back on the bottom, quick and easy. We can also take the contact, the safety contact block off of the main contactor body by opening. There's a little clip here. You can push back, pop out. The whole safety contact block comes off could be used for quick replacement, pop a new one back on if needed, and keep off to the races without having to change or undo any of the main contacts there. There's a 100E mechanical interlock kit. So this is something that I would use if I was building a reversing contactor setup for a spindle motor on a CNC machine or a manual machine where you need to spin the motor in one direction, three phase, and then you need to swap legs on that three phase supply to spin the motor in the opposite direction. So when you're building that reversing contactor, we can build in some mechanical interlock to these two contactors. There's a nice kit here. We put this little interlock pawl in the spot that's made for it here. There's a matching spot there. In that contactor, we can place them together and we can take this kit right here with the two clips, clip the bottom together 
clip the top together. Now it's a nice single unit. So when this contactor pulls in, say to move the spindle in the clockwise position, and the button was pushed to turn the spindle in the counterclockwise position, this contactor is locked out. Until that spindle is off, then this contactor can be pulled in all the way and you can move in the counterclockwise position. So these can only work when the other one is not on due to the mechanical interlock in the center. Which is nice, it removes having to do that via logic in the system, so you don't have to program it if it's not required. And if we want to wire these easily, we can use these reverse wiring power wiring kits. This will join our line voltage on one side. You bring your line voltage in three to one of the contactors and it'll branch it over. And it will also connect these output wires and, and it crosses. It'll cross your wires It'll switch your one wire, one leg on your three phase. So one contactor's rotating your motor in one direction and one contactor's rotating your motor in the other direction. So that is a quick and easy way to build a reversing contactor with safety built in if desired. So similarly to the 100C contactor, we have a 100K contactor. It's a smaller, more compact contactor, also three phase, available in a variety of voltage and current combinations. And it also has an ECL connection module made to work with it. If you wanted to add a little more intelligence to the system like before, you could add an electronic overload. It can help you in preventative maintenance scenarios and predicting failures before they occur. So these, all these contactors have serviceable parts. In this case, it's a pretty convenient contactor. You pop this, oops, you pop off this little ring here from the tab and off comes top of the contactor. Your coil in this case is right here. So it doesn't need to be flipped, but it could be serviced, it could be replaced if it burns out. That's pretty convenient. Probably one of the easiest contactors to work on out of this bunch. And nice and compact. Pop it back on, good to go. We've taken a closer look at some essential components for motor control and protection. Each use case has unique challenges, so if you have more advanced questions or need guidance, reach out to a trusted supplier to further understand your options. Remember that globalspec.com is the best source for you to learn more or find a vendor who can help you meet your goals. Thank you to Rockwell for the promotional support for today's video.